Earlier that day, when I realized I was being pursued by the fourth horseman, I made a decision to confront my enemy. It was an absolutely effortless decision. Pure muscle reaction, a spontaneous call to arms. And in that moment, all thoughts ceased in my mind. Truth be told, I've spent most of my life avoiding confrontation. Had the body of a broomstick up until college, so I learned early on my best bet was to resolve conflict with words. That was my strength. But after everything that happened to me since the fall, I had gained a confidence in myself, in my body, my primal instincts. one I hadn't heard in a while, and I couldn't believe I was hearing it again. Not here. Not like this. The laundry. The truth can be a bitter pill, especially when it threatens your entire belief system. You're the walker? I don't believe it. I didn't believe it either. Delandre being one of JD's horsemen seemed impossible until she told me her story. I didn't believe in God before that night, but I sure as hell did after. When you left New York, Russ, things only got worse. Seemed like all the good people took off. Pretty soon, there was nobody to protect. I spent my whole life in the city. It wasn't easy leaving. But I figured there had to be something better out there. I was so wrong. It was like hell on earth out there. Marauders looting and killing everywhere. I tried to help where I could, but it was just New York all over again. It wasn't until St. Louis I finally saw a glimmer of hope. There was a new Eden mission there. They were taking people in, protecting them. They needed me, and that felt good. After serving for over a year, I was entrusted with an important assignment. Track down and destroy the walker. All I can think is that balloonist helm. He must have given me bad information. Because there's no way you're the walker, Russ. After hearing what she'd been through, the laundry being a bounty hunter actually made some sense to me. But she simply couldn't accept that I was JD's mortal enemy. I tried to explain how the myth came to be, how I was only a witness to the deaths of the other three horsemen, but nothing I said seemed to convince her. Not until I showed her the Polaroid, the one I'd taken from JD. Since I'd left New Eden, that photo had become a myth in its own right. To JD's flock, it was the Holy Grail, the Shroud of Turin, indisputable proof of divine intervention. The fact I had the Polaroid, that got Delandre thinking. And when I told her why I took it, that JD was dangerous and delusional, she finally knew I was telling the truth. My God. This can't be happening. I was warned the walker would try to disgrace JD. You really are him. Now... It was my turn to swallow the bitter pill. Because the truth about Delandre, she wasn't just a bounty hunter, she was a believer. During the course of human history, most disputes and disagreements were eventually resolved through force. For many people, the introduction of the gun eliminated the need for negotiation. 
Why waste time talking when your problems could be settled at the speed of a bullet? The idea of not carrying a gun was a choice I made early on, a decision prompted partly by Eli's hard-won wisdom and partly by my fear that if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. But despite all my efforts to avoid them, guns have constantly altered my path, rarely with positive results. The universe, it would seem, was either mocking me for not taking up arms like everyone else, or it was merely testing my resolve to keep my conscience clean. Sometimes, I wondered what would have happened if I'd had a gun. How different would my journey have been? Would anyone have trusted me? Would all my appeals for peace and sanity have simply fallen on deaf ears? It was as if the gun itself represented fear, and without it, there was hope. You're gonna kill me now, aren't you? Ironically, the first time I realized how hard it is to kill a person, Delandre was there to save me. As a cop, it was her nature to assume the worst about people. That's why she carried a gun, and that's why I didn't. I simply refuse to assume the worst about others. I told you, I'm not the monster JD has made me out to be. I am still Russell Schumacher, the same man I was in New York. Instead of putting my faith in a gun, I put it in something I wanted to believe in. Delandre. I told you you'd never make it out here, but it was me I was talking about. I was afraid, until you showed me I didn't have to be. You're the reason I was able to leave New York, Russ. Delandre had put her faith in New Eden, but when I took away her fears, she found new hope. She vowed to help me turn off the EMP. So much had changed, but it still felt like old times. And with what was about to happen in Frisco, I was gonna need all the help I could get. A friend in need is a friend indeed. And with Delandre by my side, I knew at least I had that. But when we reached the Bay Bridge, the only access to Treasure Island, I needed more than a friend. A toll gate had been set up, and the only thing we had of trade value was Delandre's horse, something she wasn't about to part with. Luckily, we ran into another old friend of ours. Figured he owed us a favor, big time. How's it going, Dr. Helm? Since when did you two become friends? After what he did in Lake City, it was hard to hold back. But we needed Helm to take us up in his airship. We left the horse in an old warehouse, and it looked like our plan was gonna work. We'd succeeded in bypassing the toll gate, but that didn't mean we'd avoided paying the toll. Stop! You must pay to enter the city. I told Helm to give me the key to his storage containers. I was gonna throw some of his medical supplies overboard as payment. We're not using their damn bridge, so we're not giving them anything. You give us the key, or we throw you overboard. Delandre and I had visions of the Hindenburg exploding in our heads, but Helm remained unruffled. Do you think I'm an idiot? My balloons are filled with helium, not hydrogen. Fortunately, a bullet pierced one of Helm's propane fuel tanks. Last I saw of Helm, he was desperately trying to salvage his medical supplies when the other fuel tanks next to him blew up. And almost as soon as we hit shore, those toll gate snipers were shooting at us from the bridge. With no way out of there, our mission was in serious jeopardy.
As a kid, I'd always fantasized about finding buried treasure. And even though I never found anything valuable, I still used to dig every chance I got. Spurred on by a dream that my whole life would change when I opened up that big wooden chest. Venturing down inside that defense bunker, it brought back the old tingle of excitement. When the shovel struck something metal and my imagination would run wild, I remember walking down that corridor. It was like entering some time capsule of another world. Everything felt so futuristic, and yet it was all relics from the past. Back at NORAD, Johnny had given me a list of the codes to deactivate the EMP satellite network. But as we completed the procedure, one important question remained. How many more of these have to be deactivated? Johnny didn't have access to that information, but he did say the network was sequential, so all I had to do was follow the transmission trail. Qui êtes-vous? Vous n'êtes pas le Capitaine Unger. Qui vous a donné la permission de désactiver? Johnny was right. The network revealed the location of the next relay station, and judging by the coordinates, it was north, way north. It was the first time I'd actually found buried treasure. Not diamonds or gold, but a sign from the universe that I was actually meant to go home. But before we left, I suggested we use the satellite system to check on those toll gate snipers, make sure we weren't walking into an ambush. Turned out the snipers were gone, but there was a much larger threat out there. One that made me rethink my agenda. See, by shutting off the EMP, I'd be restoring power. And with technology working, it'd be that much harder stopping groups like the New World Historians. This could be my last chance. Going home would have to wait just a little while longer.